We begin tonight with some cold, hard facts. Donald John Trump is broke and begging for money. He owes New York State roughly $454 million and the deadline to put up a bond if he wants to appeal or a deposit on the debt is Monday. If he fails to do so, New York Attorney General Letitia James can move in on Trump's bank accounts or real estate. His lawyers, paid for by the RNC, are telling the court that he doesn't have the money, which leads us to another fact. Trump has for decades lied about his wealth and about the valuation of his properties. He also has a history of not paying back his loans, and so most self-respecting financial institutions and wealthy individuals don't want to take a chance on him. Too risky. First question here, um, I'm curious what you're hearing in Trump's home district there. Are there any concerns over whether New York could acquire ownership of Mar-a-Lago? And if that were to happen, would your office be involved? Good to be with you, Alex. Our office would not be involved, and I think Mar-a-Lago could be on the table, but that's the last place Trump would ever allow anyone to get their hands on because that's where he lives. It's his baby, his pride and joy. He's going to lay his body down in front of the gate so no one gets in. So I do think Letitia James is going to put everything on the table as a possibility, but I don't think that is the top priority. I think she's going to go to the assets that are in place in New York, uh, such as the one on Wall Street or in Westchester County first. But look, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that one day the collectors are coming to the doors of Mar-a-Lago. That's extraordinary. So what would New York's attorney general be focusing on today? And what could she do first if Trump defaults tomorrow? Well, she's already started to put things in motion in Westchester County, filing the paperwork to put liens on his properties there. Now, she didn't have to do that in New York City because the judgment was there, and so it's it's executed automatically there. But in other communities outside of New York City, she has to go ahead and file the liens, and she's already starting to do so. But on Monday, tomorrow, if Trump does not come up with the cash or the surety bond, then it's game on. Then she is going to move ahead to start the process of seizing the properties. So it is a huge day tomorrow for Donald Trump. This is his brand. This is who he is. And that's why I think that he's going to try everything he can. That's why we have to be really nervous about whether he seeks foreign intervention here. Tomorrow could prove to be, I mean, I can't say it any other way, a nightmare day for Trump. Does it surprise you at all that it's come to this? It doesn't surprise me, Omar, but I, I think you really can't overstate how much this is a nightmare for him. I mean, folks that don't know the man might say it was impeachments or it was criminal investigations by the FBI or any number of other things that he has experienced, all these other cases he's going through on classified documents or hush money. But Omar, it's his money that he cares the most about. Trump's entire identity is wrapped around this mirage of his business success. And to have that openly taken from him is something that won't just be an actual hit to his lifestyle. It will be a big political hit internally and externally. It will hit the man's ego and it will be used against him. And you're already seeing Joe Biden and his allies talk about a broke Donald Trump. It's something that really does resonate in a bad way with Donald Trump. Meanwhile, today is also the deadline for Trump to put up a bond of nearly half a billion dollars in the civil fraud case. The bond would prevent the New York attorney general from collecting on the judgment while he appeals. Trump's attorneys have asked an appellate court to reduce, delay or waive the bond. But as the Washington Post reports, the appeals court generally issues rulings on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so there is very little chance it will act today. You know, being a Trump supporter, there's one thing I'm really getting tired of, and that's the winning. Trump completed his merger today. His net worth is now higher than it has ever been in his entire fucking life. He is now on Bloomberg's world's 500 richest people. Oh, and I know you liberals would need some confirmation, so I went to your source. Even NBC says Trump's net worth reportedly soars to 6.5 billion. And just in case you needed other confirmation, here's USA Today. Trump is now one of the 500 richest people on the fucking planet. Y'all were talking about how he wasn't going to be able to afford his legal bills, which even more hilariously was reduced to 175 million. And when they asked Trump how he was gonna pay that bond, he gave them a one word answer, 
cash. But yeah, so Trump is not only going to be able to pay for his bond and have his appeal, where he's not going to have that same bullshit judge, and he's actually, I don't know, going to be able to testify, going to be able to actually have evidence introduced. But at the same time, he is now one of the 500 richest people on earth. And on top of that, in about eight months, he's going to be your fucking president. And I, honestly, this is so infuriating, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I care what the process is that these judges are arriving at. Whatever it is, it's flawed. I can tell you that much. I mean, da David put it well. It's This is a different process for, for, for this person. We have decided that he gets his own private court of justice. He has a private plane. He has, a, he has private clubs that he lives in. You know, apparently, you know, he, he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the Capitol. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost, pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. Legally, Tristan, how is that done? We just saw it. They just decided that they just, you know, the appellate court has now just decided they're going to swoop in and just change it. And that's it. And now the uh, the AG's office can now try to go up above them, I believe. You know, I don't know what the details are because you just told us. I'm guessing this is coming from the first department, uh, Pell Division First Department. That's the intermediate mm -hmm. court here in New York uh, that would be issuing a decision here. Uh, I don't know if there is a remedy for the AG's office to go up to uh, the Court of Appeals, which is our high court here in New York, and try to get them to uh, to basically countermand this order. Uh, but in my view, this is, without knowing more, unless there's some sort of other extenuating circumstance that we're going to learn here, this appears to be an absolute gross miscarriage of justice. Then we got some inexplicably bad news today. A New York appeals court did an enormous favor for Donald Trump in his business fraud case. That's the case in which he was ordered to pay or disgorge about a half a billion dollars for his long-term systemic business fraud in New York. The reason I call it inexplicably bad news is because the appeals court didn't offer one word of explanation about why they did this enormous favor for Donald Trump. And you probably heard the nature of the favor. They reduced the amount of bond he had to post to perfect his right to appeal his case and to stop New York attorney Letitia James from beginning to seize his properties to satisfy the massive money judgment that was entered against him. They reduced it from about half a billion dollars all, all the way down to just $175 million. And they did it. The appeals court did it, friends, just days after Donald Trump boasted in a social media post that he had about a half a billion dollars cash on hand. So he easily could have made the bond. But the appeals court put a stop to it. They put a hold on everything, with one exception, and they reduced the amount of bond he has to put up, $175 million. It seems pretty clear. I mean, you, you cannot escape the pattern that the institutions of government have decided that the rules and the laws and the Constitution don't apply to Donald Trump as they would apply to you and me. And that's got to change. That's got to change.